Hey everyone, this is Evan from First Updates Now, and I'm here with Team 8727 Glitch 2.0. They've been having an awesome season too far with two wins at both their district events. We're here at the North Carolina District Championships, and they are a strong contender here with their lightning fast robot, their handoff and pull with intake, along with their shooter design. We'll be diving into that and some of their programming as well on this episode of Behind the Bumpers. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. So Stella, if you can talk us a little bit more about the design-wise and how you came up with this type of this robot. So when we started with kickoff, kickoff we, had, we had to come up with a list of priorities for what we wanted our robot to do. So our first thing that we thought of was basically we want to be really good with speaker. We want to have a compact design so we can go underneath the stage. We can go quickly. We also want to be pretty light so that we can you know, have a lot of speed. And we wanted to have an over the bumper intake that could hand off into our shooter. And then we could shoot for, into both speaker and amp. So this is the pivot here. Um, and we also wanted to have a good climber. We decided on one side so that you know it would, it would take up less space and we were able to um, make a really strong climber that could climb on just one side and be reliable that way. Um, we went with a swerve drive so that like for ease of like you know speed and mobility and just like general just like fastness I don't know um, and yeah so that's our, that was and our am I correct in seeing that your shooter is on a pivot? Yeah, so our shooter's on a pivot. Um, you can see right here, this is where it pivots. So if we just, so this is our flywheels where it comes out. So it would go out at this angle normally, but if we pivot this upwards, uh, <laughs> then, oh, I don't know this. Um, then the note can kind of go down this way and into the amp. Awesome, if you want to pass over to Liam to talk a little bit more about how this whole thing works. Awesome. So yeah, I mean, it's pretty much as she said, we have our over the bumper intake. <laughs> and it's worked pretty well. Um, oops. Some issues we've had are just this beater bar right here has broken a couple of times. So we came up with this design where we put two strips of metal right here. So it beefs it up by like 150% strength. Um, our intake issues, as you can see, we have this weird plastic thing that'll just retain the note for us. Um, that way it doesn't fly out and get into our chassis and screw everything up. Um, and then our, we've had a lot of issues with our belts popping off. So we've kind of gone over and practiced and come up with some jerry rig systems that work really well. <laughs> so that's really awesome. We have this washer here that was at one point used. We have this tightening thing which was made on the fly with our 3D printers, which was awesome. Um, we have some weird zip tie thing here to tighten up our belts. So that works really well. We haven't had any issues since we've implemented all that, which is really awesome. Um, and in terms of our handoff, we had a couple of issues with like this hitting our other part right here, which is just due to the fact that we have these hard stops here and our entire arm system in the back has just been skewed. And, you know, we're working through that, but we're, we're getting there. We've not had much issues with that now. We know how to fix that. So we've just had to go straight up into it. Awesome. And I see a lot of 3D printed parts on yeah. this robot, including like this vectoring system. So how yes. did you guys come up with that? Oh uh, yeah. So um, we decided 3D printing is just one of the best ways to get stuff made. Um, these centering components right here were made just so we can get our pieces into the center, obviously. <laughs> um, but we made them out of 3D prints because just easy to make them, easy to make some rollers. Yeah. Um, awesome. Yeah. And then how do you, I haven't ever seen any other team so far with a one-sided climber, so especially yeah. a telescope yeah. arm. So how did you guys design that to be strong enough to lift your robot? So yeah, that's a big thing. Um, we had like three support systems back here, um, which are kind of hard to see. But um, we used this from ThriftyBot, this uh, spring system. And we got this climber that hooks onto one link at a time. So we hook onto a link on the right side of the stage with this, and we support the right side of our chassis against the speaker itself. So all we have to do is hang on from one side and then kind of lean into the stage and we're good to go. Awesome. If you want to pass over to Ben to talk a little yep. about the programming and auto design you stuff have done. Yeah. So first things first, let's talk about all the joints. So all of the joints are running off of uh, Rev Absolute Encoder, three-board encoders. 
So these joint or these encoders are wired back to the Robo Rio. Um, we found that because of our gear ratio of uh, one to two um, on both of these pivots, um, we can't actually use the onboard PID on the Spark Maxes, uh, which is a little headache to wrap around or a bit of a headache to work around. Um, so these pivots are this one's driven by a single Neo. Um, and then this pivot's driven by two Neos. And so these are both really powerful um, joints. They can actuate their full stroke in about half a second. Um, and so due to how fast they run, it's actually really difficult to have stable feedback control. So we heavily rely on um, feed boards and motion profiles. So both joints use trapezoidal profiles. They just accelerate up to a top speed and then accelerate um, back down to a stop. And so Almost all of the uh, movement is generated by feed forwards that are calculating the estimated voltage needed to follow that path. Um, it's like almost, you know, 99% of the voltage is generated by that. The feedback does very little. So that did give us some headaches when we had issues with things colliding because that feedback control actually wasn't strong enough to recover. Um, and we couldn't make it any stronger because of uh, instability issues because of the Robo Rio not being able to go that fast. Um, but some fun things. So our drive base swerve, we decided to roll our own code. Um, we didn't use the max swerve example or any of the existing templates. Um, we don't do many fancy things. We've implemented some things like zebra corns that are cosine scaling, um, which makes starting from a stop really smooth. Um, another thing that's been incredibly helpful has been an acceleration limit on the chassis. So we actually limit the chassis acceleration to the limit of grip for these wheels. And so with these TPU treads, so these are 3D printed um, out of, what is it, Matter Hackers build series TPU, I think. Um, and so the TPU treads, um, a lot of other teams have experienced really fast wear, only lasting a handful of matches. Well, we found that it seemed like the biggest uh, contribution to that wear was wheel slip. The wheels would heat up really quickly, and so the tread would um, start to deteriorate very fast. Awesome. So implementing the acceleration limit really helped reduce tread wear, and so we're able to get um, basically, I think, about eight matches out of the set of um, treads. Awesome. And what sensors are on here? Do you, are you using a vision system? Yes. So we are using um, photon vision. So back here, we have an Orange Pi 5. So this Orange Pi 5 is in a little acrylic enclosure. It's also mounted on elastic, so you can kind of see here. It's able to wiggle back and forth and bounce up and down. Um, we used a similar system last year, and we discovered that with the um, micro SD card that it was using, that we'd actually lose our settings periodically. Um, and so the theory was that the high vibration environment mixed with a micro SD card was not an ideal setup. So we moved to an NVMe drive on the bottom of it and the shock mounting to help um, eliminate that problem. And then we have that hooked up to a uh, OV9281 um, USB cam, that's an Ardu cam. So that's about 1280p, it's grayscale um, uh, global shutter. So we have very little tear on the April tags. So we're able to run at, I think, 45 frames per second on our April tags. And we're using that data to do um, full field localization. So we get a 3D pose estimate of where the robot is using the April tags. And so we take that, we run it through some filtering because we found that um, with the field tranches this year, sometimes when we're using multiple tags at the same time, if they're on different field elements, we get bad data because they're not quite right in relation to each other. And so we have a couple layers of filtering that help remove that bad data. Awesome. So that was team 8727 Glitch. You guys are have a great robot. You've def you're definitely one of the fastest cyclers I've seen on the field. And I wish you guys the best of luck in NCDS DCMP. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support.